big campfires When the wolves begin to call The writers tell the story Of the bravest wolf of all The king of all the hunters Born to lead the rest his name became a legend across the great southwest. Lobo, 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 your name will survive, for no man could bring you in death. Like everything else, a good legend's got to have a good beginning. The right bloodline, you might say. This one began even before Lobo's time, with a wolf famous in his own right. He was a big, rangy fella, used to roam a wide piece of the territory, back when it was still empty and mighty fine to look at. Around the neighborhood, he was known as the Fierce One, in the local Spanish, El Ferros. The vaqueros had a great deal of respect for him, too. Fact is, it amounted to a kind of a superstition. Some of them claiming he was a spirit wolf. Well, this El Faro's was Lobo's father. So for breed and blood, Lobo came from a good line. It is in the spring of 89 he was born, a litter of five pups, two brothers and a couple of sisters. That's about the usual family for wolves. Now these young'uns are off to a good start on a number of counts. For one thing, they were lucky just having El Faro's for their dad. It's a common thing in nature for the male animal to kill his offspring, if he can get to them. But the wolf's different. He's about the best parent there is, because he's gentle with his young. The wolf's loyal, too. Something most folks don't realize is that wolves mate for life. It's for all time, the male and the female both being devoted to each other and the family. For a real fine domestic arrangement, there's probably not another one like it anywhere in nature. 